The Harriet Papers is a project to make a digital edition documenting the scientific work of early modern English polymath Thomas Harriet. In addition to the primary interest of making unpublished sources available for the first time, we've also found interconnecting methods in the history of science and digital humanities, and we've benefited from the digitally oriented communities of scholars interested in Harriet studies. The project is housed at the University of Notre Dame, the University of Oxford, and the University of Cambridge, with funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Arts and Humanities Research Council. Building an editorial project based on unpublished manuscripts benefits the broader scholarly community as we plan to share our transcribing experience, editorial interactions, and a documentation of our digital scholarship. Deliverables can be a wide range of assets, ranging from a digital and print edition, both internally facing towards our team members and externally facing readers interested in the history of science. The project timeline is by July 2024. The Harriet Project uh, proposes interesting technical challenges that could be addressed by a number of current frameworks and technologies. Uh, and in fact, the original digital form of the project uh, hosted by ECHO was developed in their own XML language uh, in around 2012. Um, that operated concurrently with the development and continued development of the text decoding initiative guidelines, also written in XML, which provide a number of methods for systematically describing and marking up digital editions. Um, particular challenge of the Harriet paper is both in its content as well as in the sociology of capturing the content, proposed challenges that may exceed beyond what can reasonably done in a short time frame in TEI, but that is a possible future output. Uh, and so we explore some of those technical challenges uh, in this presentation today and into the future. The only mathematical work ever published from Harriet's investigations was his treatise, The Artist Analytici Praxis, which was published 10 years after his death. In his will, dated 1620, he appointed a friend, fellow mathematician and astrologer, the English clergyman Nathaniel Topoli, first to be overseer of my mathematical writings, to be received of my executors, to peruse and order, and to separate the chief of them from my waste papers. After various misadventures, the practice was actually edited and published by his friend Walter Warner, a much less talented mathematician, to the detriment of Harriet's later reputation. The manuscripts were fell into obscurity and were rediscovered in Petworth House only in 1784. Um, Baron von Zach, a, a visiting German historian and mathematician discovered them in the house of his friend, Lord Egremont, the, the heir to the, um, the Percy family of Northumberland, and made extraordinary claims for the papers that were found there. He published a short treatise in which he said that Harriet anticipated and surpassed both Galileo and Kepler, and sent a choice selection of the papers to the Clarendon Press in Oxford to be considered for publication. The publication, as we'll mention in a moment, did not go anywhere. Uh, Zach's significant papers were returned to Petworth House, where they still are, um, and the remainder, the vast bulk of them, were donated to the British Museum, now the British Library, divided into eight huge volumes along subject lines. These are the additional manuscripts 6782 to 6789. Um, there's a little bit of other material also found in the British Library, mostly among the papers of his other friends and collaborators a small number of papers in Sion College that belonged to Nathaniel Torpoli, which are now in the Lambeth Palace Library in London. Um, these papers scattered in various places until recently could only be seen together at the University of Delaware Special Collections. John Shirley, who wrote the first biography of Harriet, was a scholar at Delaware and had photocopies made of the entire corpus, which, he, which was kept in the library for consultation only on site. After Zach's attempts to have the, the, the papers published by Oxford, um, the papers again were brought to public notice in 1975 when a small commission of scholars tried to put together a seven volume edition of Harriet's papers and life, which went nowhere. Um, 
In the subsequent years, small treatises are found among the papers have been published separately. Matthias Schemmel, uh, one of the editors of the project we'll talk about in a moment, the, the Harriet Papers Project, uh, published the English Galileo in 2008, surveying and publishing some of the papers on motion. And Janet Beery and Jackie Steddall, another one of the editors, uh, um, published his short treatise on triangular numbers and interpolation in 2009. We also had a Google Jamboard set up as a sort of fourth screen. You can think of this as uh, something like a smart board that is shared and networked, uh, which would go out um, to all the participants. Uh, and this would allow Robert to act as something of a virtual conductor using various drawing tools to highlight tricky passages for the entire group to consider, connect different pieces together, and, and, and make sense of what was often not um, a simple uh, narrative drive from beginning to end. And so the work proceeded, uh, starting with the most basic task of capturing what textual content was on the page. Uh, during the process, the group adopted and tweaked editorial conventions for consistency um, to deal with the thorny, thorniness of the manuscript. And as you can see on the next slide here, uh, we uh, use practices such as indicating strike throughs through the use of font styling, um, indicating insertions through angle brackets, line endings by single pipes, paragraph endings by double pipes, while recording conjectures in comments and so on and so forth. Uh, we even had the very great benefit of live LaTeX transcription of Harriet's mathematical notations, uh, thanks to the dedicated efforts of our postdoc, Erno Zimmern. Now, for those in the wider world of digital text editing, these Conventions may be somewhat unnerving because surely the content could be captured in an array of TI XML tags with conjectural interpretations pointing back to them using XML IDs and so on and so forth. And yes, in an ideal world, such um, markup would be wonderful. However, we like to underscore that the purpose of the project at this phase is the live synchronous capture of content and interpretation. In other words, active scholarly work that cannot easily, easily be slowed for the insertion of the correct tag and attribute set. So supporting this digital scholarly sociology meant recording these things on the fly as quickly as possible. We are still figuring out what this looks like in the long run. As uh, Katarina has indicated, Notion has the advantage of outputting in standard formats, including Markdown. So perhaps a lighter weight format than TI would be preferable, or at least could act as a predecessor to a fuller TEI treatment. Um, such matters of interoperability and sustainability are part of the long-term goals. One reason for the disorder of Harriet's manuscripts is that they are exploratory. Harriet, in all of his work, circles around various concepts and attacks them and investigates them from different approaches. Uh, the papers that we chose, De Infinitis, are scattered over several manuscripts in um, the British Library. Uh, they have a small core of pages in which Harriet investigate somewhat systematically the notion of the infinite, but they're connected to a wide range of pages that that touch on infinity in one way or another. Uh, to give some examples of how of what the day infinity looks like, uh, here we have one of the first pages in the largest bundle of day infinity pages in which Harriet uses the growing early modern understanding of infinite sequences and series to begin to think about infinity in terms of infinite progressions of numbers, in particular, the sum of geometric and other um, decreasing progressions of, of numbers. Here's another example from the same bundle of works of, of pages on infinity. And here, Harriet goes back to puzzles from Aristotle, from medieval philosophers, thinking about the motion of lines and how those give rise to, um, to, to infinity one way or another. Um, in this case, we have two lines at an angle which gradually draw apart from each other, and he's considering the motion of a point between them. Um, in our transcription, as you see, we have tried to uh, 
record all of Harriet's second thoughts and corrections as he goes through this and often changes his mind as he goes through the composition of this um, uh, consideration of, of, of an old geometrical puzzle about the infinite. So here's one example, Francois Villette, the great French mathematician and algebraist of the late 16th century, uh, wrote in one of his works, the Variorum Responsorum of 1593, a pretty fundamental theorem for the subsequent um, history of infinite sequences and series, which was picked up first of all, it seems, by Harriet. In this theorem, uh, Viet showed how it was possible to sum any certain number of terms of a geometrical series. And then almost as an afterthought at the end, he said, and you could even do this to infinity. Harriet copied out this proof several times through De Infinitis. On the left of this slide, you have one of the copies that he made of this theorem, which Viet left unproved in his work, and one of his many proofs that he gave of the theorem taken to infinity. Um, here he gives a very clever and succinct algebraic proof of it. In other places, he does it through numerical examples or through a very ingenious geometrical proof on one set of pages. On the right, what we see is um, Charles Cavendish, um, the brother of the Earl of Newcastle, um, who wrote a, uh, who copied out in, in a series of notebooks, several of Harriet's notebooks that were made available to him by Harriet's friend, Walter Warner. So some 10 years after Harriet's death, in a very compressed way, over about nine folio sheets, Cavendish made a precy um, of the whole of the De Infinitis, or as much as, it, uh, as much of it as he could find in the manuscripts. Um, what we see here on the right from MS Harley 6002 in the British Library is the very first page of these transcripts in which he copies out very carefully Harriet's um, uh, theorem that we see on the left. Some of these technologies that we're using, Notion, Jamboard, and Zoom, may not be terribly exciting in one sense. The post-COVID world, we're used to working in some of these modalities, but thinking in the long array about what kind of scholarly work that this enables, not just at Oxford or Cambridge once every decade, but every other week, potentially, with the experts in the world on the subject, is fairly exciting. Um, New, we do need tools that can now mediate between the capture of this new live scholarship uh, and the shaping of that scholarship into larger framework. And those represent some of the next steps in this project of building a worldwide digital scriptorium.